This is Charlie Kao with Travel Mall TV in Madrid, Spain at the World Travel and Tourism Council Summit with Valerie Segada, who's with the Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority. Uh, well, you obviously have been seeing a little bit of Madrid and volunteering, as yes. you were telling me. <laughs> Why? Yes. Um, well, Madrid is beautiful. I'm so unexpected of the city. I, my mind, it was going to be more industrial, but it's so clean and very cosmopolitan, and the people have been great. And yesterday, we got to spend the day giving back to the city of Madrid with tours and cares. And we actually have uh, planted over 2,500 ivy plants in Retiro Park. 75 part there was people. A, there was over over 75 people participating. 2,500 plants. Wow. 2,500 plants. So it was a lot of digging, but it was fun. And then after that, we walked over to the Barrio de las Letras and polished um, brass letters that are embedded in the sidewalk in this neighborhood and, and they're all the famous quotes of uh, Spanish poets and uh, that was a lot of work. Hands and knees scrubbing the And the, the people, sidewalk. people couldn't figure out what you were doing there. We had several residents and locals saying, what are you doing? Why are you cleaning those? People walk through that every day and we told them why we were here and they wanted to know if we were getting paid. said, so, no, we're doing this because we want to give back to Madrid and for hosting conference. they were applauding some. Huh? It was, they were applauding. <laughs> it was so much fun. We had, I definitely recommend, you know, whenever you go somewhere, do something to give back. Yeah. Talking about what you do in places yes. and, and following the philosophy of what you do in Vegas, you leave in Vegas. Uh, Vegas is one place that always transforms itself to whatever people want. Yes. And, and that transformation takes place in one or two decades at a time. So I'm curious what the latest transformation and trends are for visitors, let's first take families that visit okay. visit Vegas. What, what has been the latest trend there? Well, I think as people are bringing um, their families, or whether they're for a convention and they bring their spouse and their kids along, or if they're there spending spring break or summer break, they're um, they're coming here. They're one enjoying the pools. We have the best pools. Um, some uh -huh. of them have now to have little beaches and wave pools. Um, we've got the uh, dolphin habitat at the Mirage. We have the new um, the container park, which is brand new, which was a part of um, the downtown project with Tony Shea, um, founder of Zappos, and that's a whole park uh, made with a, um, a custom treehouse made with a. 25 to 25 foot slide and an area for parents to watch their kids and play the latest games and they have a little bit of technology and that's kind of reinventing uh, the east side of Fremont on in downtown Las Vegas and that's that's probably the latest and greatest as well as of course the high roller mm -hmm. which is part of Project Link which is the new project by Caesars Entertainment and that is um, the highest uh, observation wheel uh, now, uh, which beat out the Eye of London, and it's about a 35-minute ride, and it you, you can see the entire strip and the, the whole Las Vegas Valley. And I definitely recommend everybody doing that. And uh, couples, uh, Vegas is popular. What is the latest trend for them? Well, there we do about 80,000 weddings a year. Um, I think what couples like is they can go do a, a very high-end wedding, say at the Wynn Encore, or go somewhere downtown and do a drive through wedding chapel, and then celebrate with their family and friends and make a vacation out of it as well. Uh, but they, couples will go there, and of course the entertainment is still the, the shows, entertainment. restaurants yep. galore, Shopping, that hasn't dining, changed much no. in the last 10 years. You no, know, and I think people are... I think that gambling is only a small piece of it now. People go in and they're going to Las Vegas to see the latest show. Say they're going to go see Reba McIntyre and Brooks and Dunn, which will soon be opening at um, the Coliseum at Caesars. Then they'll go to see, go to have a gourmet dinner with the Michelin star chef, and then they'll go treat their date, you know, to a spa treatment at some of our great spas we have. So there's definitely more to do, and of course shopping. Shopping was going to We have all the famous brands, you know, from Tory Burch to Manolo Blahnik to Dolce Gabbana to Versace to Louis Vuitton. So very high end, as well as the premium outlets, which is where I go to shop because you get great values on things, and you have all the latest designers. Mm. And and the seniors. And the, you know, I tell you what, the baby boomers—it's a die-hard market for us. They come, <laughs> they know Vegas, they stay on top of Vegas, and they keep coming back. So I think that it's um, it, it is so easy to get to, and our weather is always great. So the seniors have just as much fun, and they're still the slots. <laughs> and, and they and they do the slots. 
Well, I, I go with uh, uh, my friends. We would get together for gatherings there. And uh, I would say that we probably do a little, of course, reminisce amongst ourselves and probably go back to old... Uh, one of the things, we, we go off the strip a lot. I guess getting off the strip, looking up on Yelp, where do people go, where the... That, that that's become as much part of Vegas as the Strip, is it? Well, I think so, and I think especially with the millennial travelers, which as we're seeing will eventually be our largest travel segment, they want to see what else like what else is there outside the Strip, as you say. And let's go to a restaurant that locals go to. Let's go hang out in an area such as Tivoli Square, um, which is the Summerlin area, or the new downtown Summerlin, which is our new outdoor mall that opened by Red Rock Resort. Let's go see what they're doing out there. Uh, or let's go spend a day and go out to Red Rock Canyon and go take a, a run around there, ride bikes around there, and see what more the Strip has to offer. And in terms of development, um, hotels, condos? Well, uh, we have, um, in the net, between now and the next seven years, we have $9 billion of reinvestment into the destination. Uh, we just recently opened the Cromwell Hotel, which is part of Caesars Entertainment at Project Link. Oh. And that they took the old Barbary Coast and built the gambling hall and they kind of created a old style feel classic Vegas hotel with that kind of swanky Rat Pack vibe but in a modern setting and um, that's our latest one to open as well as the SLS which uh, bought this, the old Sahara and they reopened last year and they've, they're taking that kind of classic Vegas feel as well and uh, they're reinventing that whole north, that north uh, side of Las Vegas Boulevard. And plus, and then I would have to say what we're most excited about um, as of late is our purchase of the Riviera Hotel um, for the uh, construction and introduction of the Las Vegas Global Business District, which is 26 acres of land and we are going to be um, enhancing and expanding our convention center. So it is probably be the most Im important and exciting project of its time since the Las Vegas Convention expanding, Center. Expanding, doubling it? Well, 50%. it's about a million square feet of space, mm -hmm. 750,000 square feet of exhibit and meeting space, or exhibit and trade show space, and about 200,000 square feet of meeting and general session space. And that'll help keep us, or maintain our number one um, standing as number one trade show destination. And plus, we'll have a Las Vegas Boulevard strip address. It's pretty exciting. How do uh, some of these older properties uh, reinvent themselves. What I mean is, when we were talking about families, Circus Circus yep. came to my mind. Right? The, yes. the, 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 I remember that going in, when I was a child. And do they still pull the families? They and do. do, they they still, they, and I can uh, tell you, the mm -hmm. Circus Circus and their Adventure Dome, it's a great place. We take our child there, I'm a five and a half year old, and they have the the, um, the great water area, the water park area in there, the water slides, and not the water slides, sorry, the, it's a um, roller coaster, it feels like a water slide, and they've got the miniature putt putt golf and all these fun rides, and it's, it's a great, wonderful environment. And you can go spend an afternoon with your family, and so it's still, they're still drawing them in. And then, I mean, you take a Luxor, right? It still, still is iconic architecture, it is. the pyramid. It is, like it. And uh, I, I know they they have new restaurants and their interior, interior still looks nice, but I guess there was no theme other than the architecture, good food. Yeah. I and, think I think all the hotels are doing that. They're taking a little bit of what makes them unique, but they're constantly reinventing themselves with the restaurants and the shows and the attractions. Um, and I think they're. People still want to see and go. And see, I almost look at the hotels as museums themselves because they're all so unique. Yeah, they are. And, and, and everybody has their favorites, right? I mean, where they want to stay. And I think it's um, you can spend a whole afternoon or two just checking out different hotels. I mean, if you look at Bellagio, their um, conservatory with all of their, their flowers that they change, their flower exhibits seven times a year. And that itself is just to see it is just breathtaking of what of what their team does and it changes and you're like wow last time I was here was Chinese New Year theme now they're getting ready to go into a spring so it's uh, there's so much and there's new restaurants opening all the time and of course shows and um, attractions um, and then we're seeing a surge in the music industry with Las Vegas um, How so? with the um, enhancement in the opens of festival type programs such as the Electric Daisy Carnival, which we host every June, um, and it'll be in its uh, fourth year this year. And uh, this first time in May, the, the second and third week of May, we're hosting Rock and Rio Vegas, 
which is the first time Rock and Rio has ever left um, Rio to come to the United States and open up a second music festival. And that's being sponsored by uh, MGM Resorts uh, and Rock and Rio. And it's two different weeks of music festivals um, in an area of just um, uh, Las Vegas Boulevard in Sahara uh -huh. um, on a vacant piece of land that MGM Resorts owns. And they bought this land to have these type of festival programs. Wow. And uh, the first weekend is rock and roll, and the second weekend is pop. So you've got likes of Bruno Mars and Taylor Swift performing the second weekend, and no doubt the first weekend. And you don't have to worry about driving uh, uh, home. You just no. walk over you back walk, to your hotel. You can walk over there and walk back to your hotel, take the monorail hop in a cab and, and see it and that's uh, I think we're gonna get a whole new type of visitor to come especially for this and get to see the destination for the first well time. I appreciate that update Valerie Segarra with uh, Las Vegas Convention Visitors Authority thank you thank you very much thanks for having me